Welcome to Python for Data Science video series. As a summary, first I am going to discuss about basics of Python. If you are uh, new to Python or beginner, don't worry, I will explain each and every basic parts of Python. And then I am going to discuss about uh, data science related concepts of Python. First, let's see how to install Python into your computer. Go to Google and type anaconda distribution click on here now you can download this software by clicking this button after downloading install it in usual way I'm not going to install it again because I already have it after installing it just type in your search bar as Jupyter Notebook Now it will open in your default browser but it will take some time so let's wait. Ok now click on new button and python 3. Ok now you have your Jupyter Notebook interface so you can write your codes in this cell. First let's take some idea about this interface so here if you need to get 6 plus 5 as output you can give print inside of brackets 6 plus 5 and click this run button now you can see its output If you need to add more cells, you have to click on this plus button. You can see it's adding few cells. So if you need to remove some cell, just click on one cell and and click this scissor button. You can see it's removing. If you need to move your cell downward or upward, you can use these two arrow keys so you can see it's moving down and it's moving up again as i told you you can run your codes by clicking this run button but there's another another method that is you can just press shift and enter at the same time so let me to press them i am giving 6 plus 8 and i am pressing shift and enter together okay now let's see what are the mathematical operators of python so here you can see addition subtraction multiplication division integer division power and modulus operator so i think you are familiar with uh, first four of operators so first run chords related to those first four of chords so you can see i have those chords here so i'm going to run my first cell i have to mention one thing you can write few lines in one cell as I wrote in this cell. So I'm going to run this. We should have four uh, answers. So I'm clicking this run button. Now you can see we got our answer. Now let me to explain this integer division, power, and modulus operator one by one. Integer division means 
let's say if you divide 20 by 8 if you divide 20 by 8 you know the integer value is 2 and the remainder is 4 so if you give this kind of division you will get value with decimals let me to run this you can see our answer is 2.5 but if you need to get only integer part you can use this integer division method so i'm going to run this again yeah, you can see we got only integer part as our output so third one is if you need to get power of some value let's say as my example i'm going to get 2 to the power 3 we know the answer is 8 right so i'm going to run it i got my answer and last thing modulus operator that means if you need to let's say uh, if you need to divide 20 by 8 and you need to get its remainder as output you know the answer is 2.5 that means integer part is 2 and remainder is 4 no? 20 divided by 8 integer value is 2 and remainder is 4 so if you need to get remainder only you can use this one so i'm going to run it you can see i got only remainder as output okay let's see what are the relational operations in python here you can see those are greater than less than greater than or equal less than or equal equal and not equal let's go to the Jupyter notebook here i have to mention one thing if you need to clear these outputs you can press this cell and all output and clear okay now let's see if you give 5 is greater than 2 it's correct now so python will give you true so i'm going to run it yeah the output is true and if you give 5 is less than 2 it's a false no so output should be false next one let's say uh, if you give 5 is greater than or equal to 2 yeah it's true let's check yeah okay next one if you give 10 is equal to 10 yeah 10 is equal to 10 now so python should give true as output you have to give print function here i didn't give it but uh, in correct codes you have to give it this is this output is just a uh, some feature in jupyter notebook but it's not a good habit please use print function for each code Here, let's say if you give 10 is equal to 20, it's a false. So, Python give you it as a false. Here, I'm giving 8 is not equal to 8. It's false, no? 8 should be equal to 8, no? So, Python give us false as a output. So, last thing 5 is not equal to 8 yes 5 is not equal to 8 so 
it's true let's check got it so that's it for relational operations okay now let's learn about logical operations in python you can see there are three logical operations dosa and o and not so i here with this and and o so, however let me to explain it if you put and between two some conditions if both a and b conditions are correct your output will be true and if you put o between some two of conditions if at least one of a or b conditions are correct output will be true otherwise output will be false if you do not understand it yet let me to explain it in my jupyter notebook examples so here you can see for these two examples i am given and operator here you can see 5 is greater than 3 you know it's a correct thing right here 8 is greater than 6 that also correct so if you using and between those two of conditions both conditions should be correct to get true value as your output so here your first condition is correct and second condition also correct now definitely you should have your output as true so let me to run it you can see we got our output as true in second example first condition is correct 3 is uh, sorry 5 is greater than 3 and our second condition is not correct right 2 is greater than 6 so to get true value as your output both condition should be corrected so here our second condition is not correct so you will get definitely your output as false let me run it yeah we got it and let's move to o operate examples here you can see 100 is greater than 90 it's correct and 200 is less than 50 we know it's not correct but if you using o operator between two of conditions at least one condition should be correct to get your output as true so here we have one condition that is correct so according to this uh, image you can see at least one of a or b condition should be corrected so output of this example should be definitely true so let's run it got it in next example first condition is 6 is equal to 5 you know it is not correct next condition is 8 is equal to 9 you know that one also not correct so first condition and second condition also not correct here so we don't have any correct condition therefore we should have false as our output got it so in ne our next example 40 is greater than or equal to 30 our first condition and our second condition is 20 is greater than or equal to 10 here you can see our first condition is correct and second condition also correct so to get true as output uh, when you are using o operator you should have at least one condition i mean at least one condition should be corrected here in this example both examples are correct i mean both conditions are correct so it doesn't matter you will have definitely your output as true got it 
so let's move to not operator here you can let me to clear it you can see 5 is greater than 2 you know here your output should be true because this condition is correct one right so we got true but if you give but if you give not operator in front of the this condition you will have opposite of your normal output you know here your normal output is true but if you put not part in front of it you will get false that's the meaning of this not operator